Я комиссар Бинков представляю вам. It is I, Commissar Binkov, bringing you 2017 a year in review when it comes to new weapon systems. As a special mention, we'll start this video off with Russian T-14 tank. Its low volume serial production should have commenced earlier with first examples handed over to the Russian army for testing this year. But things got complicated, budgets were thinned and extra development is needed. So T-14, while undoubtedly a huge leap in capability when it comes to tanks, will have to be featured in a future Binkov's video. There are a bunch of other systems out there, of course, some more modern or capable than ones to be mentioned here, but remember, the video is only about those weapon systems that got delivered to their first customers in 2017. Okay, so proper number 5 is... US Ford class aircraft carrier. It's a brand new carrier type. It is just as large as Nimitz, previous US supercarrier. Ford brings some novelties, such as new generation nuclear reactor, both smaller and more powerful, a new catapult and a resting gear system, redesigned flight deck concept for more sorties per day, and a new dual band radar. Ford, however, doesn't radically change what other US carriers mean for US Navy nor will it noticeably change the balance of power in the world. It is an incremental improvement. British Queen Elizabeth Carrier Another carrier on this list, paradoxically smaller and less capable than Ford, but of greater local significance. It signifies a return to carrier ops for the Royal Navy, after they retired their previous carriers. It will feature F-35B fighters, a very big improvement in carrier op capabilities for the British forces. And it is the largest non-US carrier ever built. Queen Elizabeth's true potential will come only when its fighters are ready in meaningful numbers, after 2022. Also, while it is a big deal for the British, in worldwide context it doesn't add as much firepower or novelty. CAM missile family Another British weapon. A new surface-to-air missile deployed on a Royal Navy ship. A land-based variant will be deployed in the years ahead. It is perhaps the most advanced missile in its size class in the world. It will radically improve the air defense capabilities of all branches of British forces as it is generations ahead of its predecessors. But other countries are developing similar weapons and even if some are not as capable, their numbers will make up for it. Overall impact of CAM missile family around the world will not be great. Chinese J-20 fighter J-20 got shown flying in Air Force colors in 2017 for the first time. It is a generational leap for the Chinese Air Forces. So much so that China's potential adversaries, save for the US, may not be able to match it, when both numbers and capability are added into equation. J-20 is still an incremental improvement in capabilities for China, however advanced it is. US fighter force is still likely to outmatch it, and there aren't more than a dozen out there, and it will take another year or two before operational capability is proclaimed. Chinese DF-41 ICBM, reportedly deployed in limited numbers earlier this year. It's a game-changer for both Chinese forces and, to a lesser extent, for the balance of power in the world. Previous Chinese ICBMs lacked either range to cover all their potential targets or lacked throw weight to carry multiple warheads, or stemmed from all tech and designs and were not mobile nor survivable in a nuclear war, thus they were not built in large numbers and Chinese nuclear arsenal was always geared toward retaliation, without real first strike capability. DF-41 is a true counterpart to the contemporary Russian and US ICBMs capabilities-wise. With its range and multiple warhead capabilities, it signifies the emergence of a third nuclear superpower, one that, when it gets produced in larger numbers, may rival both US and Russia. Thank you for watching and watch out for more Binkov's videos. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.